put your thinking cap on because it's time to get an education. We are going today to Sam Monella Academy to learn about a brief history, Nikki. Of animals in space. Animals in space. I think it's only a brief history because like I only know of like one monkey and maybe a dog that went to space and then they said, you know what, let's not do that anymore. Yeah, I I don't think, I, I think mean, they both died. I don't think that's really cool. It's like one of those things whenever I learn about like animal test subjects for yeah. products and medicines and shit like that, it just, man. Yeah, it's really oh. sad. It's really gross. I don't like it. I went into mm. psychology and I went into more of like the lab side of things and thank God that they did not have like. Mice yes, and mice shit like that. And, yeah, but had I done it like at a bigger university or something like that, probably would have happened. Dude, I have a friend who had to exterminate thousands of crawdads, thousands of tadpoles, just all kinds of aquatic creatures and shit. Because, because they had to know like the exact levels of shit. And exactly what it would do to different like algae or this was information that would be used to regulate what companies were allowed to do to ecosystems before they would start getting oh, fucking hammered like over oil it. and stuff well just like all types of shit Chemicals factories that produce stuff. things and just all kinds of so shit. So they would like slowly kill them with yeah oh that's so fucked up and he would have to go like catch them and breed them sometimes and harvest them well, so and then use them like, for experiments. Make them and like, oh, but then they're gonna die and he knows that. By the Couldn't thousands. Do Couldn't do it. And have to sit there and like sleep outside for a couple hours and wake up and go to each tank and like tally everything up and then sleep for a couple more hours and then go back out and do this. See yeah. how many like lived and died yeah. and no. Mm -mm. Yeah. Nope. Grueling work. Couldn't do it. Horrible. But experiments happen. I mean, it's for like, a reason. We yeah. gotta know this shit. But at the same time, it's just sad. Yes, it is very sad. And, you know, fucking, like, history is crazy. And I love animals. But a lot of times, when animals are playing a big part in history, it's not a touching tale. <laughs> you always hear about the rabid animal that did this or the disease that did this. Like, when animals are out here you know, yeah. shaking the foundations of history and shit. It's usually pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, so today, we learn about animals in space. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Hey, kids. Animal test subjects of... You ready? Yeah. Hey kids, animal test subjects have always been an important facet of science since they allow us to study physiology in more destructive ways than we could get away with on humans. So it should come as no surprise that, over the years, there's been a lot of creatures haphazardly thrown at the cosmos against their will. Here's a bunch of smelly animals that achieved more in their short lives than you ever will. Quick disclaimer, this is by no means a comprehensive list, not even close, we'd be here all day if it was. More so just a highlight oh, just reel of the ones couple. I found the most interesting. So the Great Zoo in the Sky was first founded in 1947 when the US launched a craft containing a bunch of fruit flies 68 miles into the air in order to see what kind that. of horrible mutants would get made from all the cosmic radiation up there. Unfortunately, they were totally fine, so the Earth was like, hey, living things can go into space <laughs> and not die instantly, supple. And the next year, they decided to send up a rhesus macaque named Albert, which it seems kind of like jumping the gun to go from barely alive specs yeah, to seriously. basically a person in one step. If it were me, I would have thrown like a frog or a gerbil in between there, but whatever. I'm no cosmopolitan. Whoa. Anyway, Albert died of suffocation on the way up and never really made oh, it to space alive. Dude. Fun fact, yeah. this rocket was actually a V-2 missile stolen from the Germans after World War II. I didn't so know So just that. in case any of you have any sympathy for those Nazi characters, they're technically responsible for the death of a poor innocent space monkey. Pretty well. condemning if you ask me. But I guess the US felt pretty wow. bad about it. 
about it, so they decided to deal with their grief by naming the next monkey Albert II. Pretty unhealthy coping mechanism, according to my shrink, but she also thinks Punk is dead, so what does she know? This True. Albert actually made it into space alive through a grand effort incorporating all the incredible cutting-edge technology that the Atomic Era had oh to offer. God. And after all that... They goofed on the parachute, so Albert II turned into a fine red mist on impact, oh which just goes God. to prove the age-old adage, you can lead a monkey to space, but you can't make him land. God. There were a few more Alberts after this. Albert III fucking exploded. Albert IV made it up, but he had another tissue paper parachute what don't work for heck, so he's out. Albert V, yet again, bad shoot, liquefied on impact, until finally, in 1951, on Albert No. 6, they figured Albert out how to make six? a big blanket that consistently makes you not immediately die when you fall from the sky. The and the monkey fuck? was recovered alive from the capsule, alongside his 11 mouse roommates. Of course, he died two hours later, but hey, still counts. Oh. Earlier that same year, Russia launched two little pupniks named Tsigan and Dizik, both of whom came back unharmed. These two were the first vertebrates to ever leave Earth and come back alive. Then in 57, the Reds snagged another achievement by putting the first living thing into orbit. Besides the bacteria clinging to Sputnik 1, but they're losers, we don't talk about them. Specifically, they launched one brave and daring dog from the streets of Moscow, probably the most famous animal to ever go into space. You know its name well. That dog is, of course, Airbud. Unlike those other guys we talked about, Laika was never planned to be recovered intact since we barely knew how to put something into orbit by this time, let alone bring it back. Oh but they still wanted to make sure she stayed alive long enough to at least reach space. So before the mission, they put her through the most rigorous canine space camp that Russia had to offer. Throwing her in a centrifuge for a while to get her used to G-force, making her cage progressively smaller to get her used to cramped spaces, which made her just not shit anymore at all, but that's a different story. They also switched her diet to a special high nutrition gel that she would have eaten after takeoff. You know, had her brain not crapped out from overheating within the first few hours. In 59, the US strapped two monkeys to the nose cone of a Jupiter missile and actually got them back alive afterwards, which is crazy mostly because these things withstood 38 Gs of acceleration. For oh, context, that's the force that makes even monkeys. trained pilots lose consciousness times four, or this thing times 12, or roughly the same forced experience when you realize that's not a normal speed bump, but one of those evil tiny ones that ruin in your life you know the ones well that's what you get for doing 25 near a hospital sam well hey good thing i'm already here considering the ballistics test that just went down between the roof of my car and my freaking skull Jesus. So in 61, we graduated <laughs> from monkeys though. to great apes, sending up a chimpanzee named Ham. Remember Space Jam? <laughs> yeah, it was that. The frame for frame. Andy fuck. Samberg and all. What's special about Ham is that he was actually trained to pull levers and slap buttons while up in the ship, being rewarded banana pellets for completing tasks and getting his feet tased whenever he messed up. Sounds like a cartoon, I know, but I promise it's for real. Meanwhile, the Soviets were busy putting a big, bald, smart ape into orbit. No big deal. France saw the US and Russia sending up monkeys and dogs and felt left out, so in 63, they launched a cat into space, and were like, yeah, that's cool and unique. I'm one of the popular kids now. In 68, the Soviets saw the rabbit making rice cakes on the moon and said, hmm, how about a tortoise for that hair? Launching two of them into deep space, all the way around the moon and Why? back to Earth, where this. they were recovered alive after their capsule landed in the ocean. Kind of cheating when you are your own crash suit, but an impressive feat regardless. In 73, we put they mummy chog in space. What's a mummy chog? It's one of these things. Like a fish, but real rough and tumble. Tolerates low oxygen, weird pressure, high salinity, dishwasher safe, energy star rated, you name it sister. At first they could only swim in circles, but after a couple weeks they actually adapted to zero G and figured out how to maneuver properly. Even more interesting, we also brought mummy chog eggs, and when these hatched, the little mummy choglets knew how to swim in zero G immediately. Kind of spooky, honestly. That same That's mission also sent up weird. some spiders who managed to spin some webs. Trash spiders. webs, mind you, but hey, they managed. In 78, the Muppet Show aired pigs in space for the first time. In 85, we cut off the arm of a bunch of newts and set them up to see if they grow back the same way. The reasoning behind this being, if a newt can't grow stuff back, then an astronaut with a paper cut probably can't either. Fortunately, they rearmed themselves at the normal rate, so all's good on that front. Around the same time, NASA actually had talks with Sesame Street about sending Big Bird up on the space shuttle as a publicity stunt. This is real. The plan ultimately fell through after they realized Big Bird is fucking giant and unwieldy at all times, literally the worst possible choice for a celebrity cameo on a space shuttle. So instead, they sent a school teacher in his place and then the oh. challenger fucking exploded yeah. let me reiterate there is a timeline not too far from this one where yeah. big bird is a casualty in the single worst astronautical disaster in history a yeah. tiny evil part of me almost wishes that happened like that's just so indescribably Sam. absurd in the oh, early 90s we set up some baby now, jellyfish dude. to grow up in space just for laughs 
They figured out how to maneuver just fine, but when we brought them back down, they literally didn't have a concept of gravity and couldn't orient themselves properly in their new environment. Which, being a jellyfish is the easiest thing there is. You just kind of exist, yeah. maybe squirm a little now and then. So when you manage to somehow mess that up, you know things have gone seriously wrong. In 2003, the US sent up a bunch of invertebrates, including silkworms, spiders, carpenter bees, and harvester ants. Whoops, they exploded. In 07, some tardigrades went up, totally exposed to the vacuum of space for 10 days, which, surprise, surprise, they were fine. On that same mission, a cockroach gave birth, creating the first organism that we know of to ever have been conceived outside of Earth. And finally, in 2018, Elon Musk sent a big basket of mice to the International Space Station. Just, you know, cause he can. So those are just a handful of God's creatures who got to experience the majesty of not knowing up from down. If you're like me, you're probably a little jealous. Why does an ugly ape get to go into space but I don't? I wish to bear witness to the music of the spheres firsthand in a way that a lower creature could never appreciate. You know why you feel like that? Because you're a nerd. And what better way to fill that space-shaped space in your shriveled nerd heart than a vast collection of high-quality documentaries? That's why you need to try Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream was founded by the dude behind the Discovery Channel, and it's an absolute treasure trove if you're someone like me who feeds off useless knowledge like a loach sucking algae off a fish tank. And with over 2,400 titles, a lot of which are Curiosity okay. Stream exclusives, it'd be hard not to find something that interests you. I personally recommend Deep Ocean, The Lost World of the Pacific. There's some freaky things down there, like basically aliens. The whole thing is just one massive trip. You can get unlimited access to their full library for just $2.99 a month. I know it's a cliche, but that's literally less than a cup of Starbucks coffee a month. Also, you can get your first 30 Way days less, completely actually. free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash salmonella and use promo code salmonella during the sign up process. Or anyway, that's all for today. Three Until times next that time, frequent. I'm salmonella, and I still don't know what ligma is. Ligma. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. I can't believe he says he wishes that Big Bart had yeah. fallen up in the fucking crash. That was horrible. Speaking about the price of Starbucks, I can't remember what it was that I was watching, but it was a movie or a show from like early 2000s, I want to say. And they were, or, or maybe not even that long ago, like mid 2000s, late 2000s. I don't remember, but it was like talking about how people were like crazy for paying $3 a cup for a Starbucks drink. And I was like, well, Chad and I went the other day and it was $15 for two drinks, so... Dude, I'm telling anyway. you, it's like $7 for each one. It's fucking crazy. I, well, I... <laughs> You can for, buy beer for cheaper than that. For a little while, I worked at a jewelry store that had been in operation for over 100 years. And the people who worked there were in their 60s. And... I said something about Starbucks or something, and they were like, yeah, it's crazy. It's like, they said something similar, like $3, and I was like, um, yeah, no, no. no. And then I told him the price, and he was just like, you got to be kidding me. I was like, no. No, dude, like, like you can go to a show, like a punk show, or like, you know, that's where I go mostly, and you can buy a beer for like a couple bucks. Five dollars, six dollars. Yeah. Like, that's how much a Starbucks coffee costs now. Seven, what the fuck? Seven something. Like and a like, high end beer at a show. Like it's not like we're getting like venties no. or anything. And if you did, it would be probably just a little bit more because I don't know. they try to make you buy the biggest fucking thing they've got. But there is the the thing where you like buy one of their cups and then you take it back and then get like refills at a cheaper so maybe we should look into that not that we go that often but anyway that's just i'm a looking and making my own shit fuck that uh i've already been on top of that hot coffee not the cold i like cold coffee yeah but anyway these animals dude, i thought it was just a dog and a monkey monkey first it was a shit dog. ton more i didn't know that those tortoises like six, are the most impressive that's crazy. to me that's crazy yeah and then they were fine yeah jellyfish what's gravity right that's insane yeah but they sent so many so many different animals but he really got me on the teacher one because like i i knew that that happened i remembered that you know i wasn't alive but i remembered that that happened mm -hmm. to a teacher because they were like we want to promote that this is totally like not fine safe but like anybody, anybody can do can, this yeah. bang Dude. I'm pretty sure that my grandmother was either there 
because she lived in Florida. It's like somewhere in Florida where they do that. Or she was watching on TV. I can't remember, but because it was like a live situation. Yeah. But she watched that teacher. She watched that happen. Right. Crazy stuff, man. Which, through generational trauma, maybe lives somewhere. Oh yeah, me. I'm sure. Um, I'm not, not going to make that. What about death? What about um, the fucking, you know, spiders and bees and and different microorganisms and stuff that they put out there? It's like, dude, why put that out there in space? To go into a black hole and then I come love, back as an alien oh, fleet of that. like arachnid. We just watched Beavis like, and Butthead movie. So if you yeah. haven't watched that. Oh, the newest one? The newest Beavis and Butthead? Is it the newest Yeah, it's one? the newest movie. It's about, yeah. it's about space. And yeah, time travel time and stuff. Time travel. But it's, it's very funny. Why why shoot those things out there? Like, they're here and we dealing with that. We're dealing with that shit that. here. We didn't even know it's, about I black look holes at, and stuff like that. Like when people talk about bringing back shit from space, or like an asteroid is hit or whatever, or they're even like you know an alien species. That shouldn't be wherever. Well, it's like, what kind of viruses do they got that no. we're not ready for? Or what kind of your bacteria? Thinking, yeah, because I don't what, ever think about what that. What kind of bacteria could be in this fucking specimen that they bring I mean, back? It's really. Look, smart for you to think about. I just well, don't. I mean, there's shit in sci-fi about stuff like yeah. that, you know? Like, Venom came from space. Like, Venom is a oh, sentient yeah. organism. Or when they have, like, prehistoric stuff. There's bacteria in that, too. Like, like you know, like, they're, like, digging for m- Oh, yeah, mammoth. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you they know. thaw them out. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's stuff there. It doesn't Who have knows? to be from outer space. But... By this point in our time, like we've probably grown an immunity to it because it was our ancestors and shit that lived through that. Right. The, the ones that survived that shit, we're from them. So a lot of old wow. shit that happened a long time ago, like we, I think so. We should have immunity to it because our ancestors lived through it. You know. What Maybe I'm some peoples but maybe not like I don't know. you know what i mean i don't know i don't know either I'm but not anyway this was an interesting video uh made me sad but yeah. it was funny always some funny ass shit going on it's with funny, sam Monella. But, but fucked up he knows how to sp- dark humor yeah. he knows how to put a spin on yeah. it um so we appreciate that thank you guys for hanging out and we will see you in the next one you guys.